Aloha. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. This is the Biofuels series. Uh, please join us each week throughout the rest of October as we explore the potential of biofuels in Hawaii, as we discuss with the various stakeholders, including our legislators, our landowners, and various developers, as we can achieve goals that can help bring jobs, that can help create more sustainability for our future, that can help reduce cost of living as well. So this is a very important topic, and I appreciate that you join us. And let me welcome today our two guests. I'm very pleased, very excited to have our two guests today. We have Representative Mark Nakashima and Representative Chris Lee. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you for having us. Excellent. So I'm, we're going to start off a little bit with some personal stuff, a little bit about you guys, about what you're up to and, and why you do what you do a little bit. So let's start off with, okay, how long have you been in office? I've been in office for eight years now. For eight years. Okay. So yes. you're about to, you, so do, do you have an opponent currently? Uh, yes, I do. So I you, do you have, have a, a race. Election. Okay. Well, even more so, thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, cause I know what that's like. So, okay. Um, and Ripley, how about you? Um, Eight years as well. Eight years as well, okay. Eight years as well. Uh, fortunately, I don't have a, a race this year, so I've got a little bit of a pass, so I'll be out helping Mark <laughs> campaign <laughs> out, in, out in the second best district in the state. <laughs> <laughs> it's not yes. mine, but no, they're equally good. They're equally good. Yes, as we were talking uh, earlier before the show began, um, Rep Nakashima is District 1, which is Hilo, Hamakua area, and um, Rep Lee is uh, District 51, which is... Uh, Kailua, Kaneohe area. What, what are the bo Kailua, borders? Kailua, Waimanalo. Kailua, Waimanalo. All the way out to Midway. All the way out to Midway. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Okay. So again, no, I appreciate you being here. So, okay. Um, just real, real quick as well, let's jump back into eight years, both of you. So book ends in more ways than one. Um, what made you first run, Ripley? Um, you know, the guy in my area retired, and it was the community that I grew up in. And I actually didn't want to run originally, but um, there were some folks who were talking about some crazy things at the time uh, who were thinking about running. So I thought, well, if I don't do this, you know, you got to put up or shut up. Yeah. And um, for me, it was something, it was a place I cared about. So uh, I figured I'd put my name in and hopefully do some good stuff. And as fate would have it, ended up winning. And um, I think we've accomplished a few good things for our community since then. Yeah, I, I think so. I know that uh, I have done what I can uh, to support you in, in both your race that you've had, at least one uh, campaign that you've had, as well as uh, some, of your, some of your agenda as well. Much appreciated. No, 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 I appreciate it as well, all of your work. And so, same for you, uh, Rep Nakashima. Well, you know, in, <coughs> in my situation, it was very much the same thing. The uh, seat became uh, available, the um, incumbent uh, moved, uh, moved and uh, ran for the Senate. Okay. And uh, it was fortunate for me because prior to that, um, the Takamini dynasty held the seat for almost 50 years wow. uh, on the Hamakua coast. And um, yeah, I uh, had not initially thought about running for the seat, but again, uh, I think like Representative Lee, um, you know, I was encouraged by friends to uh, consider running for the seat that I did. and. Um, I guess uh, it worked out because here I am eight here years you are. later. And eight yes. years later. And, and, but you do have a race this year, so someone has decided that they want to stand up. Uh, well, yeah, I, I have always had uh, a race okay. uh, in every year that I've been uh, elected. So um, I've been fortunate that the voters have seen fit to return me. Which, uh, which for, says a lot. I think times. that says a lot. So congratulations to you <coughs> overcoming it every couple of years. Thank so. you. And no, that's wonderful. I think it says a lot. It means you're really, I think, connecting <coughs> to the community is what I think that means. So no, I appreciate that. So OK. Um, I know you had a race two years ago. And because uh, I know I helped with that. Yeah, <laughs> a, a, little, know, a little bit. It was, it was uh, a really uh, hotly contested race. But um, I, I think it's fortunate to have a lot of good help and support in the community. Uh, and, and we're able to pull out a, a pretty big victory. And I yeah. think that hopefully reflects some of the work we've been doing. And, and um, though at the same time, you can't take that kind of thing for granted. So we're going to keep working hard. That's right. Never take it for granted. That's right. Exactly. Yes. So excellent. Excellent. Positive. Good positive thoughts there. Appreciate that. Okay. Um, all right. So tell us, tell us please, um, what are the legislative, I, I know that we have uh, posted on our thirds here a little bit about you, but tell us about the committees that you are involved in and the roles that you may have uh, within the House of Representatives. So, Rep. Okay, uh, currently I chair the uh, Committee on Labor and Public Employment. Okay. And I sit in the government bracket also on transportation and public safety. 
And uh, in the afternoons, I sit on judiciary and uh, commerce consumer protection. Okay, wow. So these are all significant. So yes, excellent. yes. Good, good, good. Wow, okay. And, and Ripley? Uh, currently, I chair the Energy and the Environmental Protection Committee okay. and sit on the natural resources bracket. And um, in the afternoon, I'm on judiciary and consumer protection uh, as well. Okay, okay. So all very... Wow, okay, so good. These, this is why we have them here. They're very important people here today. So now I, I, mean, I truly appreciate the time that you've taken to come talk with us a bit. So, okay. Um, when you were first, I, I'll, I'll, I'll stick in this area, and then we'll go into biofuels a bit more after this. But when you were first running, did you already have in mind what committees or what you might want to do, or was that something that happened or developed after the fact? Did you have, like, specific agenda items? So we'll start with you. Um, I didn't have a specific uh, agenda item, mostly because I didn't really know uh, how things were going to be structured uh, at the Capitol. And um, once I got there, though, I realized that, you know, definitely I think for, for our side of the island, which is for Oahu, the more rural side of the island, um, environment and natural resources are definitely a priority out there. So uh, joined that particular bracket and got involved that way. That makes a lot of sense. So again, connecting to the community and making sure that you're reflective, right? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Uh, Red Nakashima. <clears throat> well, for myself, you know, I um, I'm a teacher by training. I, I taught in the classroom and um, I did work for uh, HSTA for a bit. So education was a major priority for me. And so my first four years in the legislature, I was a, a vice chair of the higher ed committee. Okay. and served in the education bracket okay. and uh, tried to do a lot of work there to try and perfect the public school system. Yeah. That has its own challenges. Yes, We'll yes. do a different show on that <laughs> later. Um, I've been doing shows on education, so actually I, I wish I would have known that. Other, I would have invited you to come sooner, certainly. <laughs> but uh, certainly you're both welcome whenever. Um, okay, now let's shift back into the energy side a little bit, a little bit of transportation energy that we're really going to be talking about more than anything. But before we start with that, what, if any, roles did you both play in the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative? You know, I think going back to, um, at least since we've been around since 2008, there definitely has been a momentum already that was, that was there trying to get Hawaii off of fossil fuels and build um, a new economy where you have new jobs in different, different energy areas. And I think for us, or for me anyway, um, uh, our, our chair at the time of the committee that, that I now chair, uh, Mina Marita, had really been involved with creating the Clean Energy Initiative um, in her day and pushing that along. So for us, it was really like, I think the first couple of years, um, I say for us, for us on the committee at the time, um, it, was, it was a learning process, really figuring out who those players are and how they came together. Because that's, that, that understanding of those relationships is key to getting any of this stuff done and actually getting these things moving in practice. So it really was um, some on-to-the-job training and, and getting to know the players more than anything. Yeah, being um, able to pull them together, absolutely. The, the stakeholders who are there to see what the challenges are and how to bring a sol any idea of solutions together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you need to have their buy-in. Yeah. So Absolutely. was that a challenge, or, or, or did everyone kind of, <coughs> kind of agree? Uh, no, you know, I think this is the challenge, right, because uh, anytime you're, you're talking about an industry that's undergoing massive change, and energy, more than any other right now, is completely transforming itself, um, you're going to have, uh, you know, quote-unquote, business winners and losers, yeah. technologies that are just out of date and are no longer uh, financially viable. At the same time, opportunities for new startups and other folks to get involved. And so um, it's really creating that transition, trying to keep it smooth so that you have, for example, meter readers at the utility who are, in some cases, no longer going to have jobs, or at least the same number of jobs, and giving them opportunities for other employment. Um, and Mark can get into the, the labor side. There's definitely a lot <laughs> of that. Absolutely. <laughs> but, but there's definitely that, that tug uh, on both sides of it that you try to navigate and try to make everybody... Uh, sure, sure. Yeah. You, you try to have as much of a win for everyone as possible, but it just can't always be there, certainly. But that's why it needs to be looked at, not just in a one session, one moment. It needs to mm -hmm. be looked at over a progression of yes. time, right? Yeah. And if you, if you recall, you know, when we were elected back in 2008, you know, the price of gasoline was rocketing upward rocketing toward upward. $4. Yeah. And, you know, at that time, it, it really emphasized the importance of 
being more energy self-sufficient um, and getting away from the fossil fuels because you know our number one export in Hawaii is money yeah. because we import all our oil and we import everything and we export our money and as long as that money is going out of our economy you know our economy is never going to get ahead right exactly so exactly. you know the the emphasis on renewable energy and fossil fuels uh, um, getting away from the fossil fuels i think was uh particularly important to me in that election and you know the fact that uh it was hitting the pocketbook and that people could not uh plan ahead that businesses were going under uh, because their monthly bills are just skyrocketing, I think. Absolutely. Or and really and that's a vital piece to understand. I mean, you want to talk to connecting with your community. It is their monthly bills. Yes. It is their weekly gas bill. Definitely. And one of the reasons we look at this is, yes, our electricity bills go up and down monthly, but then our fuel bills go up and down sometimes daily. <laughs> yes. Right? <laughs> so it's that, that's, those are called price shocks, right? When all of a sudden, hey, I've been paying that, oh, now I'm up here, and oh, wow, I now have to readjust. I can't buy that extra loaf of bread anymore because I now have to pay you know, more for gas. And that's a real impact, and that's kind of how we get into the transportation fuels, biofuels, alternative fuels conversation there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so let's, let's jump in a little bit with the... Um, with the workforce, with the labor force uh, idea, and how, what have been some of the conversations, and what are some of the, I guess, theories on how we can best address this transition of, of, of making sure we have jobs for people as we transition? So, uh, when I, actually, when I first became a uh, labor chair, the Department of Labor had received a grant from the U.S. Department of Labor uh, to explore um, green jobs in Hawaii and to look at the need for green jobs and to identify where training and workforce need to be developed uh, in the way of green jobs. So, you know, in that way, um, the Department of Labor started to try and lay the foundation for uh, the need for job training and, and preparing a new uh, workforce uh, for, the, for that uh, sector of the economy. And uh, I think that as we move forward, you know, um, that continues to be some place where we continue to look at for um, expanding, expanding roles. Um, you know, I think that there's been some uh, setback on the solar side with regard to uh, jobs available. Significant setback there. But you know, I think that you know, where, there, where there are those gaps, there are additional opportunities. And so we are looking at um, how we continue to support the industries, uh, getting us off of fossil fuels and looking at ways to um, create a workforce that will uh, help us move into this uh, fossil-free economy. Sure. No, it takes a lot of planning, a lot of forethought to really, because you don't, you don't want to upset the apple cart a little bit too much, right? You want to upset the economy. You don't want to break anything down too soon. So how do you address that? So we are already at our break. So uh, that was a really quick first 14 minutes. So uh, thank you all for joining us. This is Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, our Biofuels in Hawaii series. I want to thank once again my guests for today, Representative Chris Lee and Rep. Mark Nakashima. We'll see you in one, one minute. Thank you. Aloha, I'm Kirsten Baumgart-Turner, host of Sustainable Hawaii. Thanks for watching Think Tech this summer. We have a lot of terrific shows of great importance, and I hope you'll watch my show too every Tuesday at noon as we address sustainability issues for Hawaii. They're really pertinent as the World Conservation Congress approaches in September and the World Youth Congress that's focusing on sustainability next year as well. Have a great summer and tune in at noon every Tuesday. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here. I know you're bored this summer. You're just sitting at home, figuring out what to do, go to the beach, spend some time with Think Tech Hawaii. Spend the time thinking about how you can contribute to Hawaii and making it a better place to live. And start watching some of the programs on Think Tech, including Stan the Energy Man, where you'll learn all about everything energy, especially hydrogen and transportation. So we'll see you every Friday at 12 o'clock noon. Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha.
Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, our Biofuels in Hawaii series. Um, once again, help me welcome our guests for today, Representative Mark Nakashima and Representative Chris Lee. Thanks again for joining us. So, Thank okay, um, we were just talking about the workforce side of that, and um, one of the issues that we've got is that transition. So we don't want to have, and that transition exists in multiple areas. So we don't want to just like all at once eliminate all of the fossil fuels because how does that impact the economy in Hawaii, how does that impact the global economy if it's done in that regard? But we have to look at that same thing, and I'm, I'm asking this as a question. Our, um, we look at that same thing from a jobs perspective so that we don't have too much of a lag that requires too much training to get people into a new area. Is, is, is that kind of what you struggle with a little bit? Or I, I don't know, do you have a thoughts on that? Well, you're thinking more and more under the uh, new Federal uh, Workforce Improvement uh, and Opportunity Act. Uh, we are looking at working much closer with industry to identify where those jobs are and what okay. the needs will be. You know, up until now, a lot of workforce development was kind of more hit or miss, and it was looking at really getting people on unemployment back into employment. So it was kind of real entry level type of things. And what we're looking at now is trying to create more partnerships with the industry so that the jobs that people are getting are what the industry needs and also provides an opportunity for um, advancement uh, right. in, in those companies. So right. you know, that's kind of a key difference, not only in how we train, but also how uh, we're measured for success in that training. Got it, got it. No, okay, no, that makes sense. So, okay, we're gonna shift now back to um, it's biofuels in Hawaii, but we're going to, let me ask this, because uh, you both brought this up before the show. Um, it's biofuels in Hawaii, and there's a specific reason for that. And there could be, and there perhaps, in some opinions, should be more of a focus on producing more biofuel feedstock and, and creating that supply chain here, so there's creating more jobs in all kinds of levels. But are you more comfortable calling it alternative fuels because there are other things that we would want to include as well? I think there are definitely, um, uh, well, well, one, we should say, I don't think any of us have the answer for exactly what this place is going to look like and what's going to be viable you know, in 10, 20 years. But there are definitely a lot of um, promising options. And biofuels is definitely an area where there is a lot of that, particularly because we're never going to be able to, um, and, you know, in, in any time soon, replace liquid fuels, particularly in the transportation sector, jet fuel, and things like that. And this is the one area where you really have a lot of potential for that. But there is other, um, there are other things uh, for ground transportation here in the state. You know, you've got, um, certainly EVs are taking off, but also um, hydrogen as a fuel source is something that I know Mark's been working a lot on uh, over on his island, looking at using hydrogen as a clean fuel source to, to power fleet vehicles and buses and all kinds of things like that. So I think that's definitely part of the mix, and we can't look at these things in isolation. Right. They're all pieces of the, the same larger puzzle. Yeah, hopefully we're beyond the silos <coughs> and mm -hmm. we're definitely crossing over as much as possible. So, okay, so electric vehicles for multiple reasons could be considered. I, I, um, I just read an article today that Germany is about to require that 100% of vehicles be electric vehicles or certainly be non-fossil fuel. Um, I posted up on Facebook, how feasible is this, presumably in Hawaii, I don't know how feasible that would be or what sort of transition that would really require. Well, I would say, you know, Germany is the, the country that really originated the internal combustion engine. So if they, <laughs> if they can do that, then, then maybe they can make this next step work too. I, I hope, I, you know what, I look forward to seeing how they do that and you know, maybe see about, you know, sharing some of that. So, so wow, that's, so, so yeah, so electric vehicles are, are very important because it's taking us off of the fossil fuel transportation fuels. Of course, we are still dealing with generating that electricity through fossil fuels. Yeah. So therefore, there's, there's, there's still an impact there, right? Interestingly, uh, Jeju Island in Korea, which is our, one of our sister states, mm -hmm. um, is moving to a totally fossil-free energy grid, mostly wind and solar. Okay. And they are also um, requiring, uh, I think in 20 years that everybody have an electric car. And the you know, federal government in Korea is actually subsidizing that, uh, that test. So, you know, 
Yeah, where there's a will, there's a way. Definitely. And so they, they can do that. Um, I'm not sure that that's, that single alternative is the best, but you know, it, it shows a initiative to move in that direction. More globally. If we're talking Germany and Korea and here in Hawaii, we've been mm -hmm. talking about yeah. it for a while, right? And so, I think yeah. in here, here in Hawaii, you know, I think um, you know, each of these uh, vehicles have their, um, their niches, so to speak, where, where they work much better than others. Right. Um, for my instance, the reason I look at uh, hydrogen fuel cells um, technology is because um, you know, on my island, uh, if I get in the car, I'm driving 100 miles one way and you know the current um, range on the plugins won't let me do that on one charge, right. and so that's why your know, hydrogen kind of lends itself nicely to that. Of course, we're still a ways away from uh, little ways. being there. Little ways, little ways. I've heard that next year there's going to be some stuff coming, so yes. I'm looking forward to hearing that. So, yeah, we're working with HCAT uh, with some of that, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Stan Osserman, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a good guy. I've had some good yes, conversations yes. with him. Well, so. speed dial. <laughs> yeah, good, 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 excellent, excellent. So, all right, you mentioned political. You mentioned will. Will there's a will there's a way. But with that comes the question of political will, and that political will is based on well, what the communities are really willing to agree with and go along with. So, with regards to alternative fuels, whether it be or alternative transportation, um, different modalities, whether it's the, obviously the train is a big deal, I'm not gonna ask about that right now, but the train is a big deal. Um, uh, the Having a marine transportation transition would be interesting as well, but that also includes, okay, well, inter-island stuff, well, okay, I'm not gonna go into that now either, but then you get into biofuel side of it. You get into the electric vehicles and, and having that mandated in different ways, and then you get into the hydrogen aspect. So all of those pieces, necessary to achieve that, but it requires some will because it requires some investment. So from that perspective, what would you say the political will is as far as Hawaii is concerned, maybe your districts in particular, um, as far as alternative or biofuels potential generation or potential industry development? <laughs> I'll, I'll jump in. Uh, okay, <laughs> no, I think I think um, in the broad context, you know, we are one of the few states in the country for which I think um, moving toward renewable energy and, and alternative forms of, of transportation is sort of a, a foregone conclusion. You know, we we've we've adopted this as a, a paradigm here in the state. We want to get there. It's just a question of now how and how fast we can do it. Um, so I think the public gets it because you know we in Hawaii. I, you can you can talk all you want till the cows come home about climate change and all that other stuff on the mainland. Here, it's you know we feel these effects, right? We've had multiple hurricanes, more than usual, um, in any given month uh, over the last couple of years. We've we're, we've lost 17 miles of beaches around the state in the last couple of decades, and we're at a point where uh, even the hotels in Waikiki have stepped forward, saying, you know what, tax us more so we can pay to to fix the erosion in our beach, so that we can keep keep advertising ourselves as a tourist destination. And, and so for us, that part of it, I think, is, is not a big deal. Um, it's really how we get the political will to figure out which specific pieces of that policy puzzle we move forward with. You know, is it going to be uh, uh, additional subsidies for uh, biofuels or for um, EVs or, or what have you? And you have different elements of the industry uh, kind of competing and positioning to try and uh, make themselves viable mm -hmm. um, so that they can they can work with government and work with each other to fill that role. So it's a question of what to invest in, which technology, which direction to invest in. You kind of hold back a little <coughs> bit wanting it to happen and hoping that something shows up and says, hi, we can do this for you, right? But you don't know that. So, okay. So that's that's a challenge. That's one of the challenges that we have. As a sure, sure. I think there's you know two different things we're talking about. I mean, the state very much has been involved in um, R&D and, and, you know, new innovative experimental stuff from time to time because only government sometimes can do that. And a good example is our OTEC plant over on the Big Island, which has been, um, over the years, and you've, uh, this is all your stuff. I should let you talk about <laughs> it. Uh, but in any event, I mean... The state's been involved in partnership with some private companies and public-private partnerships over the years right. trying to get these new technologies working, and we finally just hooked one up to the grid over there for the first time anywhere uh, in the country. Um, but the next one 
maybe a private endeavor now because we, we know that to a certain scale this works. And so it's helping facilitate that. But then there's the bigger question of uh, policy. You know, do we, for example, provide tax credits for PV for everyone's roof, um, which we've been doing for quite some time, and to what level, and how long more do we keep doing that? Or sure, sure. do we put that money elsewhere? Sure, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I, uh, so going along the lines of the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative, um, I like the idea of a Hawaii Green Fuels Initiative that would be similar suite of supportive bills that can bring some revenues to the table in area in targeted areas to help advance the supply chain here. Um, in general, um, how how do you see that uh, at the moment as far as a political will perspective, trying to take something <coughs> that, like that on uh, in, in a reality versus a theory? You know, I think that you know in in all cases uh, it comes down to the cost and what it's going to cost the consumer because if it's going to be uh, a much higher cost to the consumer then the willingness to adopt is not going to be there so you know, i think when we look at these alternative fuel cells you know um, the fuel cell car is a very expensive proposition however if we were to do public transportation like fuel cell buses the uh, cost on the the cost, the investment there is uh, much lower across the board. Across the board, and yeah. so it's the economy of scale. Yeah, it's the economy of scale, and also the technology lends itself more to the buses than it does to the uh, hydrogen fuel cell car right at the Got moment. It. So because of that, you know, if we start looking at uh, transitioning in that way, then I think you start getting more uh, adoption and uh, familiarity uh, in the public. Sure. with the technology and then you can move forward there you know i think um you know over and over i keep hearing that uh using the fuel cell on a larger platform like uh, bucket trucks mm -hmm. uh will pencil out much faster than it would on something like a, a sedan got it so okay so cost is one of the barriers so, that so we I have think to, to, to address barrier. that. So um, I do have to apologize. We are at the end of our show, and I've got about five more questions to <laughs> ask, but I won't get there. But thank you again for joining us. I truly appreciate it. I hope to have you back and talk more about really this and other things. But I really appreciate your insight and, and your help in trying to help really all of us understand what we can do and some of the barriers that we have. So um, again, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you to the Think Tech crew and the staff and everyone involved. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next week when we have Ms. Cecily Barnes from HECO who will be joining us. Thank you. See you next week. Take care.